Welcome back to First and Foremost. Today we are in beautiful Brunswick County, Virginia, getting ready to start a brand new project. It's a 1,462 square foot rancher for a young couple, and we are just rip roaring ready to go. We've been waiting about two months for our building permit, but today is the day we start digging footers. So let's get together and make it happen, Captain. So our main goal here is when we dig these footings, we got to be 18 inches in the ground to the bottom of the concrete footer. So as he digs this line straight across the front of the foundation, his helper here will be holding the height and we'll be measuring off the transom so we can keep that consistent height all the way through the foundation, which will make a nicer job, a cleaner job for the, for the brick layer. These guys are going to make really quick work of this of this footing is honestly going to take only a couple hours to do the prep work uh, and then we'll bring in a third party inspector or the county themselves to inspect the rebar installation make sure things everything's up to par before they cover up that rebar and the dug hole here comes our rebar delivery right on time now the last thing we need to line up is this inspector to show up and, and be able to get this thing poured today. Fortunately, Ricky says there's probably going to be another week before we can get the foundation in, which isn't what I wanted to hear, but uh, you can only do what you can do. We're going to try to get all uh, organic members out of the hole. So that means all these extra roots that are sticking out that you can see, uh, all of those need to be clipped off and, and, and killed uh, as to not penetrate any of our CMU masonry and or the footing. All right, so you, as you can see here, guys, we have a bulkhead installed here, kind of just hovering in the air. But what happens is, as we look for that level point that's marked with the transom and they're digging across, sometimes the ground keeping that level point changes in elevation as it works towards the other side. And what we have here is the ground from where our, where our concrete rests to the top of the existing ground needs to be 18 inches and no less. We have that so that if there's any or ground freezing or anything can really damage the foundations, uh, so it, when you do arise in that situation where we are getting towards that limit and level gets a little bit closer to the top edge of the ground, we have to do what's called a bulkhead. And we will put this in here for the top of the concrete at that height, but then drop down so that our footing is located below 18 inches above the top of the soil and can continue on in that pattern. Now we'll typically step those down in about eight inch steps because that's the height of the block that we use on the foundation which creates a nice even level point where they can do a little bit of mortar work and not to have to do a whole lot of cutting the block with a with a uh, skill saw or handheld motor saw and uh, it'll make their job a lot faster so the concrete here uh, will come down and it will stay consistently level across this point here and at this point here it'll drop down and go underneath this bulkhead and from that point forward it'll stop here on the top of these rebar that we have installed vertically. Now Tommy here in the excavator has done a couple jobs for us. He's one of uh, Ricky Tanner uh, Masonry's main subcontractors, does a lot of septic work and footings and driveways and a lot of light machinery work. Um, matter of fact, our very first house was about a mile or two down the road back in 2019. It was the first house that we built for ourselves here at MWH. And Tommy was a part of that build. Actually did a great job for us on that driveway. And part of the reason why he's back here digging the footing now. Home prices uh, with these high interest rates and every other complication that the the that normal people are, are dealing with on a daily basis yeah. have done to see them actually buying a house and 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 living what is 
has been for a very long time and somewhat forgotten the American dream. I, I just think it's just awesome that it still exists and to see these young kids with their head on their shoulders straight just does my heart good. And, and the reason, you know, that we're down here overall, we don't want people to get trapped in, in 30 year rental properties and, and never have nothing to show for it. It's just with a little bit of hard work and a little bit of sacrifice for a couple of years, we hope to get hundreds and hundreds of, of younger and, and just any, any, not just young people, middle-aged, older people looking to retire. We just want to get all these people into uh, something that can last and hold its value, increase in value even, and, and something that hopefully doesn't put them in a financial strain. So these, you'll notice that down the, down the footing line here, we have these vertical rebars tacked into the ground. Now what we use those for is they are set to the height with the transom to let them know, kind of look for that as they're filling with concrete. Now these are all perfectly in line with each, with each other height wise. So if they do install that concrete, they'll be able to look with these with the shovel. Uh, good thing about the, the concrete, it is made with a lot of water and the mixtures with water and it'll naturally try to work itself level as long as you uh, work with it a little bit with, with either a hard rake or any type of tool that can uh, pull and push the concrete around. But as they fill, they will be looking for the top of these rebar that will keep that footing at a consistent and smooth height all the way across there. So for multiple reasons. One, we don't want to be any shallower with a thinner concrete to have us a little bit weaker than we need to be. And two, also not to just dump an obscene amount of concrete much more than we need, which would just be a waste of money. So we kind of keep that at, a, at an even kill. We're gonna have about eight inches of concrete down here, anywhere from eight to 10 inches. And all these spots here are perfectly in line with each other and help us keep that footing at a good height to where our, our bricklayer or foundation workers will not have to be ripping a bunch of brick material as far as height wise and they can just install some mortar, place the block and go. Much cleaner work, much nicer for the foundation guy and really an essential part of the footing process after I get this bug out of my face. Also, you'll see here that we have two number eight rebars on top of these chairs. Now these chairs are, are sitting directly onto the soil and keep that rebar off the ground just enough so that the rebar will kind of sit in the middle way of the concrete, not be closer to one edge versus the other. Hence giving that concrete something to bond to, create that strength and be in the pretty much dead center of the concrete footing. In the center of the house, we dug some pier holes and these center pier supports are gonna be filled with concrete and 12 inch by 12 inch CMU. So that's uh, concrete masonry. And they're gonna be big 12 by 12 inch blocks that'll be filled solid with mortar from the footing height all the way to the bottom of a girder beam. So on top of those piers, we will be installing a triple two by 10 girder beam that will go from this edge of the foundation all the way to the other point so that our joists can rest on the back of the home and here in the center and here in the center to the front instead of having to span that entire distance, which would create for a very dippy and curvy floor that we do not want. Our current joist length here will be 14 feet. Now, typically two by tens cannot span any more than 15 foot seven. So we are well within that mark, um, uh, even though we may still beef up the floor to a 12 inch on center install around the kitchen where we're gonna have all the cabinets and, and uh, table and refrigerator and stove weight. There's a lot of concentrated weight in those areas versus bedrooms where things tend to be a little bit more spread out and even. This is a good reason why I don't do all of the aspects of the home by myself or in-house with our guys. When you work in different localities and you have the connections in with the concrete trucks and people that they work in with on a daily basis, it creates the opportunity for them to get materials a little quicker because they have that relationship already intact. Hence, with the extra truck today, he was able to just to call, 
say, hey, I need them extra few yards of concrete. We get it with it in a moment's notice and just makes it really, really nice. Not only do we give some work right here to the locals that are going to be living in the same area that we're building, it also makes my job easier knowing that at any moment knows we have access to any and all materials that we might need. We're getting close to the end of the footing. That means almost foundation time, baby. MWH Construction Services at your service. For all your home ownership wants and needs, let us turn your dream into a reality. Make sure you guys reach out to us at mwhconstructionservices.com. Links will be in the description below. You can reach out to us at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or directly to the website. MWH Construction Services, welcome home.